What's up guys, got another video review for you. And continuing with our uh, headmasters that we've been doing recently. Well, I've been doing recently and you've been watching recently. Here we have the final Autobot that I needed to complete the Autobot, you know, the collection of Autobot headmasters. This is Brainstorm. Um, the only one you haven't seen that it's an Autobot is Highbrow, who I have but is in storage right now and I don't know where he is. So I'm not going to review him yet. Uh, if I find him, if I can dig him out, maybe I'll, you know, bring him up and review him. But as of now, he's in storage, and I don't know where he is exactly, so I can't review him yet. So this is the last one I needed. I picked him up. So now I have all four of the Autobots, and the only Decepticon now I'm missing is Weird Wolf, who, uh, due to finances right now, I'm not going to be able to afford yet. So I'm going to not be buying any more G1 figures, at least not for the next couple of months. Um, they're just too expensive. I have a bill me later bill I gotta pay uh, Luckily there's no <laughs> No financing on that. Anyway um, There's a lot of cool third, third party combiner stuff coming out and you know money's tight so Stick with me. I'll get all of them But at least we got brainstorm. So as you can first you can see he does roll even though he is quite obviously a futuristic -y jet Ooh, shiny. Um, he does have wheels on his on what will be his legs and one on his belly, which allows him to roll. Don't know why you need to roll when you're a plane, but he does. Um, one other thing that's pretty cool is these parts right here pop off, and they're actually his guns. So we'll show that off in a little bit. But that's cool that, that you can actually store the guns and make them part of the plane, which is pretty cool. Um, the only flaw with this fig, with my figure, is the wings. They hold the positions. They hold the uh, poses just fine, but once you get them out of the out of the position, they just kind of flop. Not a big deal. It's a 25 year old toy, so I'm not really gonna stress out about it. So let's take a look at the headmaster, who's in the little cockpit here. Um, unfortunately, you can't sit him in the cockpit with his arms straight out. It just doesn't fit. So this is. Again, as I've said a thousand times already, if you follow Japanese continuity, this is Brain Master. If you follow American G1, this is Arcana, and that is Brain. Uh, well, I keep calling him Brain Master. I did that. I did it in one of my, in my I think my hardhead video. Uh, Brainstorm. So if you follow the Japanese continuity, this is Brainstorm. That's his transtector. If you follow the American uh, Headmaster theory or continuity. This is Arcana, and this is Brainstorm. So I'll just take a quick look at Brain at a Brainstorm slash Arcana. It's pretty cool. I haven't really been focusing on the headmasters themselves. They're mostly all the same, just with different heads, kind of. So then we have them. There's his head on the back. Hello. We'll show the head in a second here. Same articulation as every other headmaster, joined at the knees and just straight out and then fold at the waist and the knees so let's fold them up head lift up the crest and there we have the head pretty cool face looks just like him on the show we'll put that off to the side close the cockpit uh, transformation on this guy is pretty simplistic just being a G1 first we pop off the guns put them to the side uh, we're going to take the cockpit, well not the cockpit, the nose, and you see there's a hinge right here, and that just folds up, and you just fold it along. Uh, if you notice, it follows the slope of the body of the vehicle. Um, then we come over here to the legs. They're on this double hinge, they're at a hinge here at the knee, and then a hinge at the hip. So you fold it out at the knee, and then kind of grab the whole thing and fold that out, because this is kind of tight, at least on mine. This side is ratchety. This side not so much. Don't know if that's the design, and this side's also really tight. Oh boy. I'm not even joking about how tight that is. That's super tight. Okay. Uh, feet. Hold out. Now he can stand. Uh. Take these wings, fold them back, 
Take these winglets, fold them back. Um, they're actually recessed a little bit. There's actually a recessed groove here that holds the wings. I don't know if you can see that, but fold out the hands, just rotate them out on both sides. <clears throat> there we go. And there we have uh, the transtector known as Brainstorm in his robot mode. Now for the head. We'll Tech specs. Let me just get a little tight zoom on the tech specs so you can see. So what do we shout, kids? Head on. In. And there we have his head and his tech specs. So as you can see, he's fast, fast and strong. I don't know why his intelligence is lower. Yeah, I was just taking a. Just a little closer look. It looks like his intelligence is about a 9 and his speed's a 10. And his strength's about a 5. Uh, I would think his intelligence would be a 10 and maybe his speed would be a 9. Oh well. It is what it is. Close that back up. Then you can take his guns. And uh, like I said on my hardhead review, um, they were hollow on the same side each. So I think I might have actually got two of the same guns. Uh, I'm not really gonna cry about it. So as you can see, like this side is filled in. So then when you put them on the right side, the hollow, the hollowness goes on the inside. They actually did this a lot with G1, where they had the hollow and the solid side, and the, you put the solid on the outside, make it look a little better. You also notice there's two posts. There's a post on the outside. Those that's for the un, under the fuselage of the jet. So. Uh, it was flying, you know, when it's in vehicle mode, that's how, that's where they connect, and then they connect in the fist with regular posts. So yeah, there we have G1 uh, Brainstorm complete in his robot mode. So, take a quick look. He is, his knees are very funky joints, they're very tight. So, kind of hard to get him to actually stand properly, but yeah, there we go. Uh, not too bad, Kibbly. Just got like the extra wing bits here in this section here. Like I said, you never look at the backside of G1s. So yeah, I like him. He's pretty cool. Uh, this these guys are all making me look forward to the fans project figures more and more and more. Um, can't wait for those. <laughs> Code is so awesome, and the rest of them look awesome too. But this is totally cool. Very awesome. And definitely a must-have for any G1 Headmaster Collector. Or any late G1, late in the series Collector. So yeah, now I'm rambling. That's what happens. I ramble when I get too long. Uh, articulation real quick. Again, nothing at the head. Arms go all the way around. Um, the wrist can go up and down as part of the transformation. But the guns kind of hinder it that way. And otherwise it will look kind of stupid. Um, like I said, it um, rotates at the hip and bends at the knee, but these joints are very stiff, so I don't really want to do that. Um, the knee is very shallow, or very high up, obviously, because of the transformation. And then you do have some foot articulation as part of the transformation. So it's actually decently articulated for a G1 figure. So yeah, uh, if you see this, if you see this guy for a decent price, I paid a fairly decent price for him, so I'm very happy with him. So if you do, if you can find this guy for a decent price, pick him up. If not, pick up the Fans Project one. Uh, we'll definitely be taking a look at that when that one comes out. Um, size comparison, just real quick. There he is with uh, Nightmare for Thundercracker, about the same height. Here he is with Grind Rod, who's about Voyager sized, maybe a big deluxe to a small Voyager. So he's actually a little bit shorter than like Hardhead. That's kind of interesting. So yeah, no more rambling. This has been the video review for G1 Headmaster Brainstorm.